All right, guys, welcome back. This is part two of setting the deformation on the body. So in this one, I have the arms and the legs with the deformation. So same as we did for the arm over here, I reapplied it for the legs as well. Um, now that we've rigged the arms, we can actually move on to doing the feet just to kind of get the legs out of the way. Um, let's go and get the foot back here. If I want, again, I can set a display underneath here and basically just connect it underneath the composite of the leg and simply go from the drop down, show that particular image. If ever there's some stuff that kind of gets in your way, you can always deactivate them as well. So just clicking on it, pressing D to uh, cover them up, to disable them. And so now we have a foot that we can apply deformation to, of course. Um, we have two possibilities here for the leg. Uh, I think it's not something that moves around a lot inside of the uh, rotation. So what we can do is actually use uh, two methods for rigging the foot. We can have one using a curve and another one using an envelope. So that way we can just pick whichever one we want to animate. So you can see that my pivot point is over here. So we can keep that in mind and go into our rigging tool right here. So I can start over here on the corner and click and drag that point. If ever I want the heel to kind of just stay up and a portion of the foot to stay down, uh, perhaps we could have a point somewhere around here just to make sure that this whole section remains grounded. Um, creating one in here, I'll make sure that it follows the foot. I'll go to the tip of the foot here, have another one at the top. It's all about thinking of the movement and how it's going to work. I may want to have one here just to make sure that um, we don't distort this portion too much. And this is where the junction to the leg connects. And then I can probably connect it over here for this one. It'll be easy enough with the Beziers to, uh, to readjust this particular deformer. So I can test it out over here, perhaps take both of these points again if I want to see just this one, I'll select the foot and click on show selected deformation chain to hide all the other ones. And now I can select both points and I can move those to kind of get a feel of how it's going to work for the leg. Another thing I can do is uh, take the little button here, show manipulator. This will allow me to still be able to move the points, but now I can also rotate them. So this little thing here that we left behind from the box is the pivot point. If I want to rotate it from here, I'll simply move it over to the side and be able to rotate these. Using this particular manipulator, you can also scale points uh, either vertically, horizontally, or even on both sides at the same time if you want. So that's a great thing you can do to uh, adjust as you're moving the points. Now, if we want to reset that position after we've tested it, you simply select the uh, box or the points that you want to reset and click on reset current keyframe. So shift R is not gonna do it for deformation, you need to make sure that you um, either assign a shortcut to this button or reset the, key the keyframe using the button from the toolbar. So our foot is set. We have the toes right here, uh, which are kind of coming out of the foot here. The reason why I haven't, in, uh, I haven't invert cut or added effects to anything yet is just because applying deformation to something is so much easier when you can actually see them. So I definitely recommend that you do the deformation before you start hiding things by invert cutting, adding different systems, and so on. 
So this is one way that we can do the foot. We have, of course, another way that we can do using the curve. So right now, the, um, the one that is applied is the envelope. If we want, we can either go and press this little button here to create a new deformation chain, but a single drawing can only be associated with one deformation chain. So what I would recommend right now, if we go into our library over here, we have drawing number one, you can actually create a duplicate of that foot. I have one over here. So I have zero one, zero two, drawing number one will be associated with my envelope deformer. And if I go on drawing number two, I can go back to my node view here and click on the little plus for creating a new deformation chain. Now that I've created my new deformation chain, I see transformation two over here. If I go back to my drawing number one, it will be associated with transformation one. So I can go and rename these if I want, might be a little bit easier to kind of figure them out, envelope. And this is going to be my curve. So I just need to make sure that I use the proper drawing depending on which one I want. Now that I have my second drawing, I can go and trace my curve inside of this one here. I'll just move in a little bit closer, see about where my pivot point is. And I'm going to click and drag, click and drag. So you can make them about the same length here, um, depending on which part you want to move it a little bit further. Right now I'm just using two points here. I could have had a third one in the center uh, if I wanted the foot to stay grounded, but I find that uh, even with this one, it's pretty easy to just lift the foot and um, have the length of this deformer uh, affect this region here. Uh, you may have noticed as well, I have used the envelope. So same as with uh, the other one, I didn't change over to a curve deformation for this one. And I can actually animate this little point here to kind of lift that up. So pretty handy for uh, when you need the foot to stay grounded. You could just animate the rest of the leg and detach the foot um, to have this one stay. So now that the foot is done, we can move on to the toes. Uh, the toes are pretty straightforward. As you can see, uh, it's just two lines. None of them are invert cut right now. I made sure to not apply any effects to my different pieces just to make sure that I can see everything and that it's easier for me to go and apply the deformation on those. So I'll turn off the deformation on all other pieces. And for this one, I'm gonna do a straightforward envelope. So two points for each line here, uh, basically a single curve for each one. I'm not even bothering to create two new uh, deformations. I can really just create those like this. And if I want, I can even connect it to the top here. So basically I'll be able to move those points around without being affected by anything happening on the other line here. So that's the toes. We have this little section here, which will be the sole of my foot. So as I drag this into the foot, it will be invert cut inside of there, allowing it to look like this is uh, the bottom side of the feet. So for this one, pretty simple. I'll just create a very simple envelope. So create a lot of this here. Doesn't need to be too defined. I can even just have the one point over here because this side will most likely never be seen. And I'll connect that to the other side here. So something like this. Now, if we look at the entire leg here, we have 
this entire portion we have the foot where we can switch over from one drawing to the other depending on the type of movement that we want and we have the sole and the toes as well so you can go and apply that to the foot and i'll see you guys for part three where we finish up the body and after that we can move on to the head see you guys there